off on the left, uh, just off the shoreline. You can see there's a building out here that is sunken down and abandoned. That is the remains of an old sand and gravel receiving dock that was built in the year 1919 by a gentleman named Harvey Whitney. Now, the reason why Whitney built his terminal out here rather than inside the harbor is due to the harbor's activity back 100 years ago. Back then, there was about 35 ships entering or exiting the harbor every day. Much busier during that time. Obviously, it was just at the end of World War I, so there's still a lot of demand for product. When he received sand and gravel from Grand Marais and the Apostle Islands, the only issue with his terminal was that it was out here unprotected by the harbor from the lake. Because of that, sailors and captains of ships eventually did not want to keep using his terminal as it was getting very dangerous to continue unloading, especially during the fall and winter seasons. So because of that, people stopped using his terminal. He ended up shutting it down in 1922, just three years after he started it. Since then, the building has been slowly getting reclaimed by the lake and is now known as Uncle Harvey's Mausoleum. Some of you might recognize it also as the Ice House or the Ice Box. Nowadays, it's just a popular tourist attraction and diving spot. A lot of people will swim out there, climb into and on top of the building, and then jump back off into the lake. Next up on the left, you can see that white dome structure along the shoreline. That is the Northland Vietnam Veterans Memorial Building. A half dome building commemorated on Memorial Day of 1992. It features the names of 136 soldiers who were from this area that fought and died in the Vietnam War. I would actually recommend checking the memorial out. Uh, it gives you access to the lake walk as well, so you can just walk right past it. There's no charge to go in. Kind of a unique little memorial overlooking the uh, area. The large brick building with the smokestack and the red water tower is the old Fitgers Brewery. Built in 1882, it was home of Fitgers' famous beer all the way up until 1972. Except during the Prohibition period, obviously during that time they were not allowed to make any alcoholic products, so instead they made do by making candies and sodas. Or at least that's what they tell us. Not entirely sure if we believe them there. In 1972, the brewery shut down in preparations for being demolished. Interstate Highway 35 was being uh, planned out at that time, and it was going to run right where the brewery stands. Fortunately for the brewery, the uh, highway ended up being rerouted to go underneath the city rather than above ground along the shoreline, thus saving the brewery itself. It then went underwent renovations. And has now been reopened as a multi-complex building. It's now the Fickers Hotel. They got a couple restaurants in there, as well as some gift shops and an old section of the brewery that still produces uh, small amounts of beer to this day.
through those. Next up on the left, you can see these two castle like towers of poking out behind the trees. That is the bandstand at the Leaf Erickson Park. Leif Erikson Park is named after the Viking explorer Leif Erikson, who, if you recall your history, was the Viking who sailed from Europe to Newfoundland about a thousand years ago. Where are we going next? There was a replica of the ship that Erikson used to sail across the Atlantic Ocean that had made a 6,700 mile journey across the Great Lakes and across the Atlantic to then be placed at that park, but it got vandalized a couple years ago and I think it's still in storage. The park is normally used for uh, music activities and movies in the park, an event where they would uh, put up a big projector screen, play a movie in the afternoon and evening. This last year, due to the pandemic, as far as I know, they did not do anything like that, and I don't know if they plan on uh, starting up again quite yet this year. If anything, they'll start up later. But the park is still open to the public and is uh, accessible down to the beach, where you can see some people are walking around. Connected to Leaf Erickson Park via a walkway is the Bluth Rose Garden, sitting on top of this brick wall directly to our left. That has thousands of roses and flowers that have bloomed at this time. That's a nice place to walk around, get some uh, outside uh, exercise maybe. It's a good place for weddings to be uh, wedding photos to be taken. And also a nice place to get some good views of the sunrise and chipping activity that happens out here in the lake. What also makes the, the garden unique is that it sits on top of the freeway. Interstate Highway 35 starts all the way down in Texas and ends about a mile north of us. Originally the highway was going to be above ground, uh, about four stories above ground. That was going to be running along the shoreline, but the people of Duluth did not want the highway to be built that way. First and foremost, it would have blocked their views of the lake and made the shoreline not, not as pretty. And so they didn't want that. The more important reason was due to the winter months. The lake does not freeze over until the end of January, usually. So lake spray in uh, December and January would have caused a lot of ice to form. So they ended up rerouting the highway to go underneath the city through several tunnels, the last one of which we just went past. And you can see the highway has emerged for about another mile before it merges onto uh, Highway 61.